Salutations and welcome everyone to another Overwatch 2 video where today we're going to be talking about Ash, who I would say is probably the second most slept on DPS in the entirety of Overwatch. I will go over the number one in a future video. Um, you might be able to guess on who that one is if you've been uh, listening to some you know, things I've been saying in the past couple videos or even if you just watch a lot of Overwatch 1 videos, you might be able to figure out who I is that I'm talking about. But today I want to talk about Ash because I believe Ash is the most versatile DPS in Overwatch 2. She's just like my tried and true. She's my most played DPS uh, for uh, all the seasons. Well, not every season, but combined in, in competitive uh, for Overwatch 2. She's my most played this season. I'm playing a lot of Tracer because I'm trying to get better. But she is my second most played and just a character that I feel like fits on pretty much every single map and also has no bad matchups. I would say her worst matchup might be like Reinhardt because he has that big shield to protect both himself and his teammates, but you can throw the dynamite over the shield and people sleep on her kit and the value that she brings. A lot of people like to talk about Ash into like where she fits in her role because long range damage, you have the one shots in Hanzo and Widowmaker. And in close range, you have your Cassidy's and your Tracers, your Genjis, your Reapers, things of that nature. And Ash is just kind of somewhere in the middle. She's not good, as good as Cassidy is at the mid-range, right? Not as good as Widow in the long range. But I feel like she's more consistent at both of those things than the characters that specialize uh, within that role. Because of her ability at long range with her super high fire rate and you actually do see in pro play whenever you do see ashes they spam the hip fire quite a lot more than you might expect certainly more than i ever expected um and that's something i should probably like incorporate a little bit more because you know she's gotten a lot of buffs over the years on her fire rate and her reload speed to where she's in such a strong place right now and i mentioned in one of my first ever Overwatch 2 videos in the early beta that I think Ash was going to be a sleeping giant. Even with the nerfs to Bob that we knew were going to uh, come out, the fact that he just doesn't have as much health, he's still a super strong ultimate and a consistent ultimate. It's not a skill shot. Um, you know, he's not always going to be great. He can't t take an objective by himself. He's, you don't want to like initiate with the Bob. Usually he can get burned down if he gets shielded off and discorded and or slept, right? But he's sort of like an agent of chaos to throw a different line of fire at them. And yeah, she did get the nerf uh, in the latest patch to where she no longer charges ult while Bob is out which they said was a bug fix, even though there was a bug fix like six years ago that said it was a bug that she couldn't. So who knows how that's going to pan out in the future. I don't know how well she is performing, but I'd say her pick rate is pretty good. I see Ash uh, a decent amount of time, but she's kind of like one of those sneaky good characters and that people don't see or at the very least appreciate the value that she has in what she does because she's you know, good at long range, but she's not going to one-shot headshot like your Hanzos and your Widows. So people don't get to see how often she can two-shot, right? Especially with like a Mercy Pocket. The ability to turn three shots into two shots is only overshadowed by Mercy's ability to turn Sojourn's two shots into one shots, right? So, like, she's definitely one of the biggest benefactors of a Mercy Pocket. More so than a widow more so than a hanzo more so than a cassidy and maybe as much but you know maybe actually even a little bit more uh, than soldier 76 and her ability to maintain high ground is also unparalleled when you talk about the dps role uh when it comes to hit scan because uh soldier can run to a high ground you know and cassidy i mean he doesn't have any mobility outside of his little role right but her ability to get to high ground, to challenge something, to initiate something, or get a defensive position via her coach gun uh, is, I think, one of the most undervalued parts of her kit is her coach gun because it makes her undiveable. Whereas, like, Soldier is super diveable, especially against, like, a Wrecking Ball who, you know, will do more damage than uh, a Winston will. And you can coach gun him away from his healing aura and you can uh, challenge him from high ground a lot faster and more consistently than a Widow 
or a Hanzo can, even though they can. She just needs her coach gun to uh, get up uh, usually to that height and can also spam at close range if that is what is needed. And coach gun, it's, you know, it's damage value isn't great, even though I did get a, a, a coach gun final blow um, at some point in this game. Forget if it already happened yet. But her, her versatility via the coach gun to get to high ground quickly for defensive and offensive purposes, as well as to boop away any would-be divers like Wrecking Balls and Winstons and Divas, or maybe even just a Ramatra, you know, they're going to run in and pop their nemesis form, or an Orisa that's spinning in and then going to Terror Surge, your ability to push yourself away with the coach gun combined with your ability to push the enemy away at the exact same time she's not going to get axed by a junker queen ever she's not going to get dove by a winston or a wrecking balls all of wrecking balls dives are going to get thrown out of whack because she's just going to reposition him to a spot that he does not want to be so she's actually really, really good against dive, even though she's not great at close-up damage. Her ability to turn a close-quarter fight into a mid- or long-range fight via the coach gun is just pure value. Pure value. Pushing the Roadhog out of the way of connecting on his hook follow-ups on your teammates or your enemy tanks uh, going in. Or someone who needs to get out of cover for, say, a Bob, for instance. Able to get just enough damage off to take care of the Winston, take care of the Ana, and take care of the Soldier 76 to secure play of the game. Ash, I think, is just so slept on because people don't see her as, like, overpowered. People don't see, ah, oh, man, someone needs to take care of that Ash. That's not something you really hear that much. Her ult isn't, like, herself, and it's, like, pretty consistent, so people, like, they know what to expect, like... Ah, they got a good angle, or we didn't, you know, trap it, or what have you, discord it, shield it, sleep it, things of that nature. Bob is pretty consistent. Uh, there's, uh, you can't get, you know, little value out of him. That is still possible, but it's a very consistent ultimate, as well as just her primary fire, right? I mean, dynamite is great, especially that the things best against dynamite aren't used very often. There's not a lot of people playing D.Va as this diva can contest didn't even have a lot of success against it because she doesn't have a lot of defense matrix and again they nerfed her for no reason even though her win rate and pick rate were really low um to where you don't have to worry about her diving on you even if she is diving on you with a defense matrix to where you can't get your coach gun off because she doesn't have so much defense matrix to throw around willy-nilly to where ash at mid and long ranges is going to get a ton of easy free headshots on D.Va because of how little defense matrix she is going to have to where even if she does eat your dynamite, you're still doing, you know, almost Cassidy levels of damage on her in those close and mid ranges because of her fast fire rate and D.Va's easy to hit uh, head box, right? And she just adds a lot of chaos with Bob and with the burn of dynamite. You'll hit the back line and you're, you're, the, the enemy back line isn't getting dove on like a Tracer or a Genji, but they're still burning and maybe they need a little bit of heals just to start surviving. But there's no way to peel for that outside of a Zarya bubble or a, a cleansing uh, Kiriko cooldown. And people aren't playing Kiriko very much, especially since her nerf and, you know, very much so since Roadhog changed from the best tank in the game to the worst tank in the game he benefited a lot from that afuda because it would cleanse any discords or antis on him which are his biggest weaknesses because he has no shield and he has to be able to uh heal himself in order to get his maximum amount of output and i mean ash is great against every tank like i said if they don't have a shield it's easy headshots if you try to dive on him on her she coach guns them away and if they do have a shield dynamite gets past it you need to get you get an off angle and you can harass from mid and long range consistently whereas you know even if you're a great widowmaker even if like you're an absolute boss as widowmaker you're never going to be consistent every single match whereas ash is, is you're just going to be more consistent because it's easier to hit those shots you have a lot more shots to deal with you can deal with snipers you can actually out duel a sniper even though they can one shot you and you can't one shot them even with uh say like a mercy pocket right that was some tuning uh that they did do but 
she benefits more from a mercy pocket than you could say possibly anyone outside of a sojourn at the very least i would say if you've played really good sojourns since her nerf that dropped her down from being super duper uh meta worthy as they dropped two ults on me to get the kill um but i feel like she's just, she's such a good threat from long range with the primary fire and the dynamite and she can't be easily dove on like widow or hanzo or soldier uh with the coach gun to where she doesn't have that weaknesses either so i don't think she's weak against any tank and she can deal with some of the harder to deal with dps like a farah an echo a, a, a Widowmaker. She has the capabilities to uh, win those duels that many other DPS cannot as effectively to where her versatility, I think, just makes her one of the best uh, damage characters in the game and also the most damaging character in the game. Even Overwatch 1, uh, Ash had my highest damage per 10 minutes uh, and then more than any other DPS. And still in Overwatch 2, even I'm even outputting more damage because there's you know less shields, less tanks in the game, uh, less things uh, stopping your dynamite from getting a ton of maximum uh, guaranteed value, right? Because the only thing that can stop it, Defense Matrix, a Zarya Bubble, or uh, a Cleansing Afuda from Kiriko, and none of those three characters are being used super often. So you're going to get a lot of value from your dynamites. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of bobs. And that's a lot of kills. That's a lot of damage. I mean, I don't play a lot of Bastion. And I think he is insanely good at all levels of play. All levels of play, mind you. Not just bronze, silver, gold. No, masters, grandmasters, top 500. Uh, we've even seen a little bit of him in Overwatch League. Uh, you know, at the very least in the Pro-Am, right? That could change, you know, more or less uh, in the regular season. But Bastion is super duper strong, outputs a ton of damage. But, you know, he can be CC'd, he can be doved on, his damage can be mitigated uh, or outranged via a Hanzo or a Widowmaker, maybe Torbjorn hitting you from two different angles via the turret as well as his primary fire. Um, but Ash with the dynamite and with Bob and her primary fire. All those things are super consistent damage resources. She can duel with the best of them. She's not going to be able to get dove. Even if she gets hacked, jumped on by a Genji or a Winston or a Wrecking Ball, she's just going to get guaranteed damage with dam Dynamite. Easy uh, contesting with against high ground and as well as uh, uh, taking high ground with her Coach Gun and Bob. So, like, her damage... Uh, per 10 minutes is the highest out of all my characters by a pretty decent margin. And as you can see, I got like uh, 21,000 damage in a 15 minute game, something like that. Yeah, 21,319 damage in a 12 minute, 24 second game. Like that's incredible. That's more than you're going to see from a Bastion uh, if he's going to get pocketed because his windows of damage aren't very long. Whereas Ash is consistent long time value damage from all ranges against all compositions on all maps. So if you haven't played a lot of Ash, highly recommend it. She is versatile AF.